Hi, this is Alan Gleeson. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further tutorials. In this video, we will quickly discuss two mix approaches, bottom up and top down, and the advantages and disadvantages of both methods. I'm using Ableton to explain this, but the process is not DAW specific. There are of course other approaches and most people will probably use a hybrid method. To begin with, I will discuss the bottom up approach. To be honest, this is the approach that I use the most. It involves building a mix from the ground up. As I am creating an electronic music track, the quality, timbre and impact of the sounds is incredibly important. And for me, sound design is part of the compositional process. So this is a track that I finished, but I've gone back to an early version of it to look at the elements that I used to create the track. So often I'll start off with the drums and the bass, but sometimes if I've got a chord or melody idea, I'll combine that with the drums first. So I've just got my kick drum soloed here. So I always spend a bit of time getting the kick sound that I want just right. With this sound here, I've layered up three different sounds to combine a low, mid and high kick. After that, I've added various processing and I'm adding some limiting and glue compression as well. I've got a filter at the end there, but I'm not using that currently. So I spent a bit of time getting this sound the way that I want to do before moving on to the next sound. So already at this stage, I'm using my sends and returns, bringing in effects. So I spend time tweaking each sound and once I'm happy with it, then I'll move on to the next sound. So most of these sounds, I've worked on them already. There's various dynamics and EQ processing applied. And in my session view here, I have different patterns programmed in. Different variations, as this was the beginning of the track. So when I have all my parts working together, then I will subgroup them for further processing. Particularly with my drums, I like to do the compression at multiple stages, adding a bit on the actual track itself, then add a bit more on the group. And when I'm working on my mix, I often have processing on the mix bus as well to give me an impression of what it will sound like when it's actually mastered. So when I've got my drum part down, I'll add in the bass. So again, this was just the sketch of the song that started it out. And on my bass track, I have also a lot of processing applied if we spend a bit of time working on the sound, adding EQ, compression, and some filtering. I've grouped that with my drums, and then on my drum and bus group, I've applied some compression and some multiband dynamics as well. So my groups are in place. I've got a subgroup for my drums and my bass. And I, though I haven't got the parts yet, I've already created a subgroup for my synth group and my keys group. I know I'm going to be adding that type of material to the track and on those tracks I've got some basic settings for EQ and compression already set up that I will tweak once the material starts being routed through it. I've got my effects return set up. At the minute I've just got a reverb and a delay so that as I'm building the arrangement all the processing is already in place. So when I have my sounds laid out I'll actually switch over to the arrangement view and create a rougher arrangement of this. This will allow me at this stage to also start adding automation where necessary. So as I start to add other elements, I'll repeat this process, adding the sound, refining the sound, adding automation, tweaking it, subgrouping it. This will allow me, as I'm creating the track, to be creating rough mixes, auditioning them on different speaker setups to make sure that the track has the right impact and is translating well. So I'm adding material, refining it, and then moving on and continuing this process as I'm actually writing the track. So by the time that I'm actually finished the track, it's mixed with only minor adjustments to be made. The downside of working this way is that it can be time consuming. Depending on how particular you are, a lot of time can be spent perfecting a sound at the expense of progressing the track and keeping the compositional ideas fresh. Another downside is that you can run into CPU issues requiring freezing or bouncing depending on the DAW that you are working on. Using the other approach, top-down mixing, you start the mix process when the composition and recording stage is finished. As you're working in reverse to the bottom-up approach, you start at the end of the signal path, the mix bus. So this is the completed track here. I'll go to my master channel and I'll just loop a particular section of the track. So, so because I'm working in reverse here, I will be adding plugins to the master chain first.
So some of that processing is a bit abrupt, but I would refine it to bring out various elements within the mix. Through the application of this EQ, compression and limiting, you can quickly and dramatically improve the mix. As you're working on the complete mix, changes you make can be very musical, focusing on the punch and impact of the low end, making sure there's no muddiness in the mid, and adding some air to make the top end crisp. When you start to compress the mix, tonal imbalances and issues quickly become apparent, but a couple of quick adjustments can allow you to create a sense of how the mix is working. So if we go back to our settings again. So I can bring in and out various effects. Listen to the impact and tonal changes they're making. And refine those processes further. From this stage then I would move backwards. So for my master channel I would have a look at my group tracks. So I've got a group for my drums and bass, I've got a group for my synth and I've got a group for my keys. Depending on the size of your mix you might have even further groups. I like to keep it quite simple and then on these tracks I might do further enhancements and again this is allowing me to quickly alter the balance of the mix with these groups focused on particular types of material. So I can adjust the timbre using EQ and the dynamics and then from that stage I can go back further again maybe to other subgroups or actually to individual tracks. The advantage of working with this approach is that you divide the production up into its individual stages. So when you're focusing on the composition, that's all you're focusing on before switching over to focus on the mix and then later on onto the master. By starting on the mix bus, you get some quick rewards and it can often lead to less processing throughout the mix as you are focusing on all the content and the mix working as a stereo track rather than individual components. And in general, less processing, but not always, will allow you to preserve the original sonic quality of the recordings. Which approach is better for you should be determined by experimentation. If you find yourself leaving tracks unfinished because you spent so much time in the production phase and got tired of the material, maybe adopting a top-down approach might be worth exploring. If you find your productions are not sonically engaging or having some trouble getting your mixes to be as loud and punchy, spending some time on a bottom-up approach, refining sounds, A being with commercially released tracks and getting the exact sound you're after before advancing could help you get the results you desire. Once you have tried both approaches, you can take what works best for you Working on a mixed philosophy or approach is a constant development and is part of your voice as a producer, engineer and musician. This has been Alan Gleeson for ADSR. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further tutorials.